Oh, hi, hello, how are you? It looks like we made it. This is the after party for Shit I Wish Someone Told Me, the weekly live that goes down to a recap the episode of Shit I Wish Someone Told Me from earlier this week. I'm also going to answer your questions that you had and share what you had to say in the poll results on Wednesday, or well, I'm going to give you the results for what you had to say on Wednesday, and I'm going to answer some questions, I think I already said that, and then also uh, share some shit that you wish someone had told you about the evolution of you. And so it's just going to be me today because uh, this was a solo episode, so if you haven't listened to it, it's pretty good, go ahead and have a listen, we are talking all about you and your evolution, how to leverage that for your benefit. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it right off with just giving you a quick recap of what I actually spoke about this week. And so what the Evolution of You is about, uh, this is the second month of me doing a solo episode where I am speaking to a different pillar of the self system, which is the system that I use when I work with my clients one on one to help them become confident and you know, live the life that they have always wanted from a evidence based perspective. And we start with self-discovery. All the episodes last month were focused on self-discovery. This month we are focusing on evolution. Next month we're going to be focusing on our life redesign and then we're going to be talking about your future focus formula so how to keep on keeping on. So in this episode my intention was to really provide a new awareness around the potential power in your story and so that way you can leverage it moving forward to increase the likelihood of evolving into who it is that you actually want to be instead of just kind of hoping for the best. And so whenever we started, whenever I started this episode, I began with a few disclaimers. So first of all, evolution is natural. It's change, but you're in choice with whether or not you use it in a constructive way that supports your growth. Uh, The other disclaimer that I shared was that we have neural pathways that are the shortest distance between two points in our brain, which is how our habits are created and why we do the things that we've always done. So whenever we talk about evolution, it's important to note that as well, because evolution can be hard. Change is hard. We don't like it. And so I spoke about why that is that we don't like that. And that brings me to the third disclaimer, and that is that evolution can be scary because it's uncertain. And so I dove into this a bit, but I wanted to bring it up here and now because it's important to note when we're having this conversation that evolution is a scary thing. Whenever you think about you and changing and becoming the next version of yourself, whether that's who you want to be or whether that's just kind of like, you know, what's happening, then it's something where you might feel anxious. You might feel a bit nervous or apprehensive because it's unknown. So even though you are consciously like, yes, this is who I want to be. This is good for me. It's something where in your body, viscerally, it is unknown. And so it's going to be an uncomfortable thing. And so it can be scary. I talk a lot about fear. I've done a whole episode with Coach Josh Brunell on the five primal fears. And so you can definitely get more information about that. You can ask me more about that. But I wanted to point that out. The last disclaimer that I'm going to mention here and that I speak about in the actual episode is the awareness of the fact that of all of the evolution, of all the people that come and go throughout your life, you are the common denominator. And so this can often be something that we look at like, well, fuck, like I'm doing something wrong, right? Like all these people, like they're just leaving and, you know, I'm the one that's still here, but you're the one that's still evolving, right? Like you aren't the problem necessarily. You might be, right? Let's be honest, but you also might be the solution. It might be that you were just evolving out of these relationships because they no longer serve who you either are or who you are becoming. So those are the disclaimers that I shared. Um, To wrap up the recap, I also spoke about some of the problems that we run into, that people run into when they are evolving. And so that looks like wanting to run before they walk it looks like not actually having the foundation of what you need to go ahead and hello, Nashua, um, the foundation that you need to go ahead and up level. And so it's something where like you're trying to run, but you, you never learn like the basics of how to walk. And so you might end up hurting yourself. Like, could you do it? Like, sure. But you might end up hurting yourself. So it's important. That's why we started with self-discovery to look at this in a linear way. And at the same time, Once it has been built, once the foundation has been laid, to acknowledge that just because you now know calculus does not mean that you will never need to go back and do some basic algebra and some basic math, like some adding and subtracting. 
And that's how the same thing goes with evolution. Like oftentimes things happen and we are very much like, oh, well, I feel like I'm taking one step forward and you know, two steps back. And I acknowledge it might feel that way. And also that's why I want to bring you this analogy. Like even though you know calculus, right? Like even though you've advanced to that level, doesn't mean that you're not going to need to add and subtract ever again in your life. Like sometimes that's just what we do. Like that's just what evolution looks like. Joe, hello. Joe, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason that we have some percentages because we did not have percentages on the poll results that I posted earlier. So my apologies for that. Shout out to Joe. Thank you for that. And yeah, we have Coach Najwa in the house from last week. Was that when we did? Yeah, last week we did our episode. Wow. It's been a long week. Um, but yeah, happy that you are both here. Make sure to comment anything that you have any questions or comments about. Um, I'm about to wrap up the recap here. The only other thing that I had to say that I covered in the episode, it's a pretty short episode, but it was like a comprehensive one. I touched on a lot of things is that, um, you can get caught in the shame spiral. So coming off of what I was sharing about knowing, you know, or acknowledging it feels like you're taking one step forward and like two steps back, you can start to get caught in a shame spiral where you think, oh, well, I should have evolved more by now. Like I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be going through these steps again, kind of a thing. And while again, valid, I want to point out that you are, you have never gone through those steps with as much knowledge as you were equipped with at that moment. So while yes, it may feel like that, it's something where you are a lot more adequately prepared this time than the times before. So instead of looking at it as like, oh God, this thing you have to do it again, look at this thing is that you get to do again and really consider how you can leverage all that you know now to even get more out of it. And I also spoke about, lastly, how to, yes, Najwa said yes, right? Like, thank you. Um, yeah, it's something where we get frustrated because we're like, oh, I'm here again. But also it's like, yes. And that means that there's still more. You can still milk that for more. Like there's still more that you can get out of that situation. There's still some more like essence to to take from that experience. So, yeah, how what is that and how can you do it? Um, not just you, but like universal you. So everyone, all of us. Uh, the last thing I touched on was I spoke about a foundation. And so in the episode also, I go into how to build that foundation sneak peek. It involves reflection, which coach Nashua and all, I have done a whole conversation on the importance of self-reflection. And I linked that in the description of the actual episode. So you can find that there. Um, and I spoke about giving it a metric. So whenever we are looking into hello, uh, whenever we're looking into things where it's something that we are reflecting and we are evolving. It's hard to know to what extent and what's working and what's not if you don't put a metric on it. And so in the episode on Monday, episode 70, I spoke about that. And also in mine and Najwa's episode, I spoke about putting a metric. I'm, I'm big on metrics. Like I'm big on like the numbers. And so that is a recap um, of what I spoke about in this week's episode. And if if you have not listened yet, I highly recommend. It's really good. It's just under 30 minutes, so it's not too long this week, but it is a good listen. And so, um, yeah, that just gives you an overview of what I spoke about. So now let's go over the poll results since we have them where we can actually see them because, yeah, Joe told me how to do that. So again, thank you for that. So the first question that I asked, these have not been publicized unless you happen to see them whenever you were tapping through my stories. So these have not been seen, um, but here they are now. These, I just put these in the slide. So question number one, how important do you think it is to leverage your past experiences for your future evolution? And so super excited to see that 77% of you said super important. I agree. Then we had 8% for literally the other three responses. And so, 8% meh, I go with the flow, 8% wait, I can do that? And then 8% it's not important, F it all, what happens, happens, which sounds like my younger self could have like slid in to my stories and answered that last one there. Um, but I guess it would be more than 8%. But yeah, so was not surprised because we talk about how important reflection is a lot if you are familiar with me and what I speak about. Um, most of my community is very self-aware. And so, yes, I feel like a proud mama bear reading these. And for the I go with the flow, um, I get that. 
wait, I can do that. That was cool because, yeah, like it's something where we don't oftentimes realize that this is even something that we can do, right? I touch on that in the episode as well This uh, from this Monday. And then the it's not, if at all, it happens, or happens, happens. That like So these answers, none of them surprise me because I think that oftentimes the way in which we respond to one of these questions, whether they be, you know, questions for should I wish or anything else is very subjective to what we have going on personally in our lives. And so I'm present to that and I acknowledge that. And I really appreciate to everyone that responds to these polls, the vulnerability and your transparency. So thank you for that. I feel that this really offers a wide array of the type of variation that we can see as we're like navigating this whole like life thing. And also the fact that someone responded that they feel that it is, you know, this way to every response. And so I think that that just is a testament to how unalone we are, like how, how not alone, how unalone, that's not a word, but you get what I'm saying, (laughs) how connected we are, because if you feel some way, the chances are, while no one can feel necessarily your exact way and know your exact experience, it is something where there's someone that feels similar, probably. So, uh, wanted to put that out there. The next question I asked once I asked, so, you know, how important do you think it is to reflect? So when you, you know, if you are someone who does reflect, then how often do you take time to reflect on what you could, you could do differently? So this was surprising to me, 53%. So over half said daily, which I mean, God damn, get it. The remaining percentages were 20%. I don't. I get it. And then split evenly 13 and 13 weekly and monthly. So, I mean, I'm impressed. 53%. Like, that's over half. Do it daily, which I think is a really cool thing to do. This is something that I work with with my clients just to encourage them to do. It doesn't have to be this really involved thing where you sit down with, like, you know, you can, you can very much make it like, you know, an experience where you sit down, you light a candle, you pour a drink, like you make it like a thing, but you very much do not have to. You very much can just make it like quick mental list, like while you're in the shower, what could I have done differently today? And like, that could be it. Like that counts too, right? So if you don't take time to reflect, then I encourage you to just try it. Try it today. Whenever you are you know, getting ready for bed or whenever you hop off of this live, just try it. Just what went really well today? Consider that. You can comment it on this video. You can write it in your journal. What went really well today? And what could you have done differently? And this isn't to shame anyone. So take the judgment out of it. Just observe like what went really well. So yay, positive psychology, positive emotions. And what could you have done differently? Think of those two things. Uh, for the people who do it weekly and monthly, I think that makes a lot of sense. A lot of people have gotten into, you know, weekly habits and, uh, goal setting and also on a monthly capacity. So that's cool. And then also, yeah, a lot of people are just like, ain't nobody got time for that. Like there's enough going on. I don't have time for this. Um, however, if you're looking to evolve and create change and leverage your experience for your future benefit, I definitely do recommend suggest, invite, whatever, uh, to just try it, to just, just try it, make it something where there's the lowest barrier of entry, where it's going to be something that's easy for you to do. Not something where you're just like, Oh God, I've got to do this thing. Right. Maybe you give yourself a drink. Maybe that's like your reward for doing it. Create your dopamine reward system in that way. So I asked how important is it to self-reflect so that you can leverage that for your evolution. I asked you know, how often do you take the time to even consider, right? If you are a self-reflector, like how often do you take the time to consider it? But then I asked, how often do you actually take action on the things that you realize in that reflection? Because oftentimes I ask this because oftentimes we know the things that we need to do that we want to do that'll likely increase our chances of getting the result that we want, right? But we just don't do them. And we can talk about that some other time, but I'm going to talk about now if you want, but let me know in the comments. Um, it's something where oftentimes we know the things, but we just don't do them. So I wanted to know, I wanted you to tell me like, how often do you take action now that you have this awareness? Like how often do you like, do you do the thing? How often do you do the follow through? 
And 75% of people said sometimes. Makes total sense, right? It's probably something where if it's an easy thing, I would assume you're like, all right, I'll do that. You know, if it's something that required a bit more effort, then it's like, meh, maybe not. Uh, 17% said they never take action on it. So you're aware of it, but you don't do anything about it, which makes total sense, right? Neural pathways, we have habits, and there are things like the shortest distance between two points is the things, the way that we've always done something, which is, you know, how we create habits and behaviors and patterns in our brain. And so that makes total sense, right? Like, you, you know it, but you're like, yeah, it's not, it's not that important. Like, if it's not that important to you, you're probably not going to take any action on it. 8% of people said always, which y'all must be my, my A types, my, my Virgos, my people who are like, I'm just going to get this shit done. So kudos to you all. And then I threw in here another option, which was whoopsies. I meant to, but, and so 0% of you said that, which I was kind of surprised because usually at least somewhat. So anytime there is a zero response, I'm always a little surprised. But 0% of you said, whoopsies, I meant to. So either you sometimes do it, you always do it, or you <laughs> never do it because you never meant to in the first place. So that's cool. Um, the next question that I asked was, this has become one of my favorite questions to ask. And that is to describe the situation, describe the topic using only emojis and so this week the description to use the thing to define using only emojis is your evolution and so I put them up here on the screen I've tried to like type them in I've tried to just say them but this works better since it's just me I thought that we would all look at them together presentation style so this is my powerpoint y'all right here of the responses that people gave whenever they were describing their evolution using only emojis so let's talk about this. If you all have interpretations for what you think these are, definitely comment them. Um, I'm going to share while you were doing that what I think these mean. And so the first one, infinity symbol. So I think that that just means like it's perpetual. Your evolution is never ending, which we love. We love that there's an emoji to explain and define that now. This one's like a little like content face, it seems. So totally get that. The, <laughs> this other one I posted on my stories because this is one of the first ones to, to respond and it's a shrug. It's just a guy shrugging like, I don't know, like that made me laugh because I think that we have all been there. We've all just been like, I, I don't know. I don't know. What's this life for? Right. And so that definitely made me giggle. Uh, this other one next to that going across the top as if we we're reading is like a flex emoji. I mean, you can see what it is. It's a flex emoji and like the, like the big smile emoji. And so I take that to mean that like they're strong, like they're doing it, but like sometimes it's like, Oh God, like that's kind of how I took that. This one, this one I took to mean, okay. So the next one, so first one, first one on the left, second row, I took this to mean they used to drink, but went to college or got a degree, and then there's a fire. Now, I mean, I know who this is, but now they work out and they also drink again. So cheers, cheers to that. Like we're cheersing in the middle and in, or excuse me, in the beginning and the end. And so it looks like we just, we did some things in between there. So um, I think that's a good depiction of evolution. So thank you for that. This one says from, and it's like a little emoji that's just like, I take this to mean like meh like whatever to dancing like yeah party time I got this I got this to <laughs> another shrug which I feel is so applicable right like another shrug so that yeah I take that to mean yeah like it is what it is Woo, it's a party and then yeah actually you know what I I don't know I just IDK that's what I took that one to mean for this next one here it's like, oh, God, this is boring. It's the Leon emoji. And then it's like, oh, shit, this is some crazy stuff. And then it's just like the side emoji, the, the womp womp, like, eh, like, I, I don't know about this. That's what that one says to me. This next one is a sad emoji, a humble emoji, a straight faced emoji, a laugh emoji, and then an angel emoji. So I kind of take that to mean that they were sad, 
they started to get curious and then they're like, are you fucking kidding me? And then they're like, oh, it's okay. It's good. And now they're like a high, their higher self. Like now they're <laughs> not necessarily an angel can do no harm, but like that now they look at things from like a higher like perspective, like point of view, just relating the halo to the ethereal realms and spirituality. This next one makes me giggle. So they're looking around, so they're observing, but then it's really sad. And so they started crying. They went through, you know, like a, a phase of, you know, just being sad, which hashtag same. And then they were like, whatever, like I'm sassy. It's me. Like it is what it is. And then they were just like, oh God, like it is what it is. But like also, you know, okay. Like, I don't know how much I like this. And then they were like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck it all middle finger and now they're at a point where they're like whatever we got this high five so that's that's how i took that last one um their bad bitch era uh i mean i know who i mean i know who all these are but yeah um that is that is how i take that one um so yeah i i love this explain describe via emoji so thank you for that um yeah, if y'all have any questions, comments, if I got anything wrong, if you think something else, definitely do let me know, either now, live, or later. Uh, but while you are doing that, I'm going to go ahead and pop into what we have here for our questions. So two questions this week, and the question I asked you was, what questions do you have about your evolution? And the first question is, how to stop falling back to the previous action pattern. So great question. First of all, first of all, on the questions, if you are ever like, mm, should I ask it? Should I not? Yes, definitely just go for it because chances are 100%. If you have that question, someone else does as well. And so by asking it, you are not only helping out yourself to get an answer, but you're also helping out someone who might not be as courageous as you. So if you were ever like, do I ask the question? Yes. Yes, you do. Just go ahead and send it. They're all anonymous and I will answer them. I mean, I can obviously see that you sent it, but I mean, I'm not like, woo, look at what, you know, Sam said. I don't know anyone named Sam. I was trying to think my name or I don't know. Joe, yeah, I love all the emojis. I love the emojis too. Like I think the define, describe and emojis is so fun because it's like, it's very much like open interpretation, but also like it's not, right? Like we, we know what some of those meant. Like the dumpster fire from last week, like we totally, we totally knew and we totally related. We've all had a dumpster fire job. It was like a whole ass thing. So yeah, love the emoji descriptions. Thank you. So for this question, getting back on track, we skirted off. Now we're skirting, skirting back. Is that a word? Skirting? Like, I don't know. Anyway, we veered off. Now we're, we're veering back. So what questions do you have about your evolution? How to stop falling back to the previous action pattern. Okay. So again, great question. This is common, right? This is what I was speaking about in the recap. This is what I spoke about in the episode. It's oftentimes something where you're like, yes, two steps forward, but then you're like three steps back. What happened? And so this is where, and I talk about this in the episode, not to keep saying that, but um, this is where neural pathways come into play, right? Like Shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and that straight line in your brain is a neural pathway. So we have these connections that are made in our brains that say, hey, this thing is familiar, and so we're going to kind of put this on autopilot, right? 95 to 98% of everything that we do is actually on autopilot. And so when you are in a situation where you are looking to make a conscious change, because the that, that's like why we do it. So the question is how to stop doing it, right? So I posted something the other day about self-directed neuroplasticity, and this is essentially the act of rewiring the your brain using reflection and intention to go ahead and actually create a new neural pathway and be mindful with the cultivation of that. And so that requires some of the things I spoke about when, you know, we were talking earlier about self-reflection and putting a metric on it, like what's working, what's not. And so those are some things that you can really start to do to prevent yourself from falling back to the previous action pattern. The fact that you are aware of it, first and foremost, is the first step. So you've already done that. So check that off. Kudos. Congratulations. Now it's simply to start to become aware of like, okay, what things tend to trigger falling back into that old action 
pattern. Is it a specific person that I'm around? Is it a specific, you know, day of the week, time of the year? Because, you know, we are, you know, we, we respond in rhythms and cadences. And so look for the things that seem to start to, you know, repeat that cadence. Like look at the things that start to, that you start to notice that you become aware of that are similar and the overlap with whatever the action pattern is that you were looking to change. And so that way you'll start to notice, oh, well, you know, it's on Mondays that I start to really get anxious when I hadn't been feeling anxious, like let's say, right? So like, or well, why is it on Mondays? Well, that's the first day of the week. Like, okay, what happens on the first day of the week? Like, is it something about your job? Like, is it something about like, you're going to be away from your pet? Like, what is it? And so those are the kinds of things where you can start to not just like mask the problem. Like, well, I don't think about it. Let me say a mantra. Let me do something, you know, to distract myself where you can actually start to see what is causing the the fall back into the previous pattern. Like what's causing, you know, the reroute back to the old neural pathway, what's causing that so that you can leverage that knowledge, leverage that awareness to set yourself up for future success, right? To set yourself up, to put in some systems and structures into play so that you know, like let's say it's something where you're feeling anxious on Mondays and you realize it's because both like, you have to go to work and also like you don't want to leave your pet. So what are some systems and structures you can set up in place for that? Okay, well, what is it about work? Like, is it that you don't feel like you're going to be prepared? Okay, what can you do to prepare yourself? Is it that you don't want to leave your pet alone? Okay, is there some way that you can potentially, you know, hire someone to come and check on the midday? Like, what are the things that you can start to do to create systems and structures that will support you with not feeling that kind of way, like, you know, midday on Monday. I'm just using Monday anxiety for a reason, because I know a lot of people experience that, um, or Sunday night anxiety, the Sunday scares, right? Like that is a thing. And so that's what I mean. Uh, if you have more questions, I'm happy to talk more about it specifically, but the ways in which you can prevent yourself from falling back into a previous action pattern is to become aware of it. Already got that check. Awesome. Kudos and then start to look at what causes that step, what causes that backwardsness, and then consider, you know, why it happens and what you can then therefore do to prevent it from happening in the future. And then lastly, give yourself grace. And I talk about this in the episode as well, but you know, it's a constant evolution. It is all just R and D. It is all just research and development. And so just know that these things will happen as you start to move forward, right? Like we never just go like full steam ahead and like never look back. Like I know that they say that, but it's something where it's like, I mean, you know, sometimes you look back in that mirror and you're like, oh yeah. Like even if you're still moving forward, you can, you can also like acknowledge what's happened before. So that is what I have to say about that. I hope that that was helpful. If you want to talk more about it, like I said, slide into my DMs and let's do it. But otherwise let's talk about the second question. So how to deal with situations when people treat you like your former self, knowing full well that you've evolved? Oof. Okay, also another great question. I love these questions. I love the question time, so thank you for it. So, okay, interesting that you bring this up, first of all, because next week's episode, so Monday's episode is actually with Josh, and we're gonna be talking about the evolution of relationships. And so, we don't speak specifically to this. Uh, we can and we will more if you would like for us to, if I don't answer it enough now. Um, but I feel like it's worth mentioning next week anyway, since it is about the evolution of yourself and relationships. So I'm going to answer it now. But yeah, we'll speak to it tomorrow or next week as well. Um, this is something where we do talk about this in the episode, how to know when it's time to leave a relationship. So we talk about dynamic shifts, right? And so I've got so much good stuff to say on this. So when you have shifted your relationship, whenever you have changed yourself and you have started to experience your own evolution, then your relationship with yourself has obviously changed and therefore your relationship with others will change as well. And so when we are in a position where our relationship dynamic with someone else shifts, if that other person was getting a need met or perceived some type of an imbalance or any type of a change, like we hate change as people, right? Like we hate change as people because even if it is something where we consciously are like, this is good for us, we don't again viscerally, you know, know that and believe that because we haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen the evidence of it. 
And so when we are changing ourselves and we're evolving and we're in a situation where our relationships are evolving, then that other person will perceive that shift. Energy is our oldest language. So we're going to pick up on it. People are going to pick up on it. And when they still try to treat you like your former self, then the way that you can best navigate this is to have a conversation with them, right? Like address the elephant in the room. Hey, you know, I know that this is what we used to do. However, this is how I would like to move forward now. And, you know, give them time and space because just because you've made the change doesn't mean, and I'm not not saying put up with their bullshit. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm just saying, you know, it is a change. And so figure out what your new relationship dynamic looks like. And so, yes, like let's, let's do you first all for that. At the same time, acknowledging we need, you know, community and connection and love and belonging. And so it's something where you have to create this this balance and when there's a shift in the relationship it's something where you have to figure out what your new relationship dynamic looks like with that person so taking it back to the needs if they were getting a need met that is now no more then it's something where you know is this relationship like are we going to reassess the terms and conditions of our relationship so that you know, you can be okay being in this relationship and no longer getting that need met from me in that way. Is that something where, you know, I'm just not going to meet that need period? Like, what does it look like? There's, there's so many different like things that we can go in with that, but having a conversation with the person about it to deal with the elephant in the room is step one, right? Cause you've already acknowledged it. And so now it's something where it's like, Hey, you know, I'm not saying this to, you know, be combative or anything else. But I'm saying this because this is an important conversation that we need to have because your relationship, our relationship is important to me. And this is something where I want to make sure that we're both on the same page so that we can both grow, right? So that we can both evolve and so that we can, you know, I can still be who I am and that we can learn how to work together and still be in a relationship in that capacity. Hello, Sean. Um, There's something called compassionate communication, which is an excellent guide that can support you if I actually made a PowerPoint on it, um, if anyone is interested, that can support you in having these kinds of conversations because oftentimes it's something where we don't know how to have these conversations because this is some shit no one told us, right? And so when we are in the place where we're like, all right, like a conversation needs to be had, then it can be difficult not only for you, but also for the other person to receive that because they can internalize, you know, oh, this is about me. Like I did something wrong. Like we have to have a talk because when did we have to have a talk growing up, right? Like when some shit hit the fan. And so it's something where they can really start to become defensive. They don't want to hear necessarily what you have to say, you know, a lot of the times because they're like feeling like they need to be on defense. And so it's something where you need to be careful with the language as you, or it's important, need to be, but it's important to be careful with the language that you are using whenever you are having that conversation. So that's what I have to say about that. Um, and yeah, we're going to be talking more about, like I said, the evolution of relationships next week. And then after that, the evolution of boundaries. So lots of good stuff coming up for this specific topic. And yeah, we will make sure to touch on that. Um, whenever we were, whenever we're doing, if we've we'll, we'll already recorded the episodes, but whenever we were in the after party of both of those, if we have not already done so, but we do talk about, you know, how to know when it's time to leave, uh, in next week's episode. And so sometimes that is what that relationship dynamic shift looks like is that, Hey, like, you know, agree to disagree. You know, this, this relationship has expired. It's reached its expiration. And, you know, one of the things that, um, coach Adam Moraskas and I spoke about, whenever we did an episode on why you can't get over them is regardless at some point, 100% of all of your relationships end. And it doesn't have to be something where it's this all out brawl, like screw you, like, you know, you're an asshole, anything like that. It can very much be something where it's like, Hey, you know, I think that this has been a good thing. And at the same time, I think now maybe it's time for us to part ways. So you can kind of just play it by ear, um, see how it goes with that. So that's what to say about that. Lastly, I want to share some shit that you all said you wished someone told you about your evolution. So four people shared this week and thank you for doing that. And so the first thing that someone said is that change is constant and we have to keep adapting so it doesn't define yourself or so don't define yourself by your situation. And I thought that this was great because 
oftentimes we do tend to define ourselves by whatever's happening for us and whatever's happening in our lives at that time. And so it's something where that doesn't define who you are. It makes you part of who you are and how you respond to it as well. But yeah, it does not define who you are. And it is something where, yeah, change is the only, the only thing consistent is change. And so whether or not we are some people who welcome that or some people who resist that is up to you and the ways in which we navigate it. That's something I like to talk about a lot as well. Some people say that adversity builds resilience. It is not. It is the way in which you deal with the adversity. Same thing with, you know, time heals all wounds. That's some bullshit. It is what you do within that time. So same thing in this capacity. Change is constant. And yeah, it's important to recognize that you have the opportunity to leverage the experience depending on, you know, who it is that you want to be. And the more aware you are of that, the more you take time to reflect, then the better prepared you're going to be to leverage it to have the desired outcome that you want instead of just kind of like hoping for the best. So that was a lot that I had to say about that. The other comment we have here of some shit that someone wishes that someone told them about their evolution is that you are free to change and evolve whatever anybody says we love. That is 100% true. I agree. And then we also have here evolution is reality. It's not necessarily good or bad. It just is. Yes. I oftentimes suggest that people remove the charge. Obviously, feel what you need to feel. Feelings are important. We talked about that before in the episode on, you know, the importance or the cost of not feeling your feelings. And at the same time, it's something where we reach a point once we've felt the feels that it's like, okay, like, what can I do with my logical brain, my neocortex? Let me just look at this and, you know, take it for what it is accepting your reality. There's another conversation on that and just look at this for what it is so that I can decide how I want to respond. Great. Feelings play into that, but sometimes it's something where when we are experiencing things like evolution and certain realities, it's like, it is what it is. You know, you can find it of course. And at the same time, just because you accept your reality does not mean that you agree with it, right? It just means that you're no longer expending energy that you could be trying to navigate it, fighting it, right? Like it means that it's just an acceptance of, not an agreement of, but an acceptance of this is what is. Uh, the last thing, um, they say our future may be written, um, but it doesn't mean that you have to like it. You can change things. Okay, and we're back. It's telling me that we were paused due to poor connectivity. So I don't know if y'all heard me, but uh, it says we're back now. So I was wrapping up and saying thank you for still being here while I work through all the technical difficulties today. Um, they say our future may be written, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't mean that you can't, but it doesn't mean that you have to like it. You can change things. So yes, 1000%. And that's exactly, that is a beautiful thesis statement to end on because that is exactly what we've spoken about in this episode. That's exactly what we've spoken about in this after party. And that's exactly what we're going to be speaking about all month long. So yes, things may happen. And that also plays into what we were saying in the previous shit that someone wishes someone told them comment here. Evolution is reality. Not necessarily good or bad. It just is when it comes to, yeah, like it's not an acceptance, right? Or excuse me, it's not an agreement. It's just an acceptance of like, okay, like, This is the reality of what it is. Now, what do you want to do about it? So that's it, y'all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all of your responses and your comments and for your shares and your questions. I hope that this was helpful. This was a really fun episode for me. The next episode, this whole, this, this whole month, this whole month is like a fun, I mean, I I think they're all fun, but uh, this whole month is fun and Yeah, Josh and I will be back on Monday at 8 a.m. talking about the evolution of relationships. And so make sure to check that out. (coughs) Polls per usual. If you hear coughing, that's my (coughs) tea. So polls per usual will be on Wednesday. And then we'll be going live on Friday. Uh, Josh will be with me. And so we will be talking about, yeah, any questions that you have about the evolution of 
relationships. So looking forward to that. Share this with someone. Share this week's episode with someone. If you haven't listened yet, go ahead and have a listen to that because it is really good. Questions, comments, or concerns, I am here. Let me know how I can support you. I hope that you have an amazing weekend, and I will see you on the screens. Bye.